my name is Sean Ali. Uh, I'm an assistant professor of medicine and the director of the Structural Heart Program here at UAB. Um, we'll be talking about TAVA uh, today, uh, giving an update on the technology and the progress here at UAB. The kind of care we have at UAB regards uh, TAVA or management of uh, valvular heart disease is multidisciplinary. Uh, that means that most of our patients, or almost all our patients, come through the valve clinic, uh, which is uh, staffed by a cardiac surgeon, an interventional cardiologist, uh, a valve coordinator. We actually have two valve coordinators. Uh, we see a wide variety of valve cases, from aortic valves to mitral valves to tricuspidal, sometimes pulmonic valve. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, these patients are seen uh, by a joint team of a surgeon and a, and a cardiologist uh, so we offer what's called the heart team approach, um, and that's important for our patients. Uh, the, the, we want to put our best foot forward for the patient, offer them the best. If we think they're best served by open surgery, they do get that. If we think they're best served by some transkaiether or percutaneous approach, we offer that too. And if we think that they're not ready for either one, then we let them know and com communicate with their referring docs that you know they're not ready. So uh, patients get the best uh, of both worlds, so to say. Regarding the working relationship with our surgeons, I think that's one of the, the, the highlights of our program, really. Uh, we've been very lucky to, to have had a very good uh, surgical team to work with. Uh, Dr. Davis has been part of the program since the beginning. Uh, he's been very supportive. We've, uh, we've also had other surgeons join and uh, be a part of the program. I think to have a successful valve program, you have to have a buy-in from the surgical uh, group. And we've been very lucky to have that. Um, sometimes uh, we've seen uh, programs struggle because the surgeons have not bought in and you know, they're not all in for, uh, for these cases. We've been very fortunate here at UAB. Uh, the surgeons are keen on the technology. They play a major role in seeing the patients in, uh, in the procedures and even the post-procedure care. And it's been a great relationship uh, working with our surgical team here at UAB. My name is um, Jamie Davies. I'm uh, one of the adult cardiac surgeons here at UAB. I've been here since 2008. I'm currently the chief of the uh, um, adult cardiac surgical um, uh, side of, the, of our division, and I run the transcatheter aortic valve procedure. I've been involved since we began the procedure in 2012. Since that time, we've done approximately 300 transcatheter valve procedures, and we're now starting to do more, including the mitra clip and newer devices. UAB is uh, unique around in, uh, the state in terms of most of our patients actually come from further away than just inside the city. So we started the valve clinic in 2012. We were actually the second center in the state. One was in Mobile and we were the second one behind Mobile to start the valve center. And uh, since that time, we've seen, I think, over five to 700 patients in the valve clinic and they're able to see both cardiology, surgery, and have all their tests done at the same time. So the TAVR procedure, the transcatheter aortic valve procedures, we started in August of 2012. Since that time, we've done about 300 procedures over the last three years. We've looked at our data front since that time, and we broke it down in the first 50 patients, the next 50, and then the following 100 patients. So we had three different groups, and we've, we're getting, having an abstract published soon that shows that the mortality and the uh, morbidity from the procedure have significantly dropped since we've, our experience has grown. And so as we grow more, then we're able to see more of the possible mistakes or the um, problems that you can have with the procedure, and we're able to avoid those easier. When we first started in 2012, we had a hybrid OR that was built initially in 2004, and it was somewhat smaller. And since that time, about a year to a year and a half ago, we built a new hybrid OR that's so much larger and it's able to equip more of the material that we need. And it provides the ideal setting. Um, it needs to be done somewhere that you can perform basic catheterization skills and in an OR type setting. Some centers do it in a cath lab and they've equipped that more like an operating room but it's really not an operating room. In some of the procedures you have to convert or do some uh, procedures that are like an operation, so it has to be done in an operating room. So it allows us to uniquely be able to do both procedures in one room. So since that we started, the um, Edwards was the first um, company that had approval in the United States, and they had the first what they called the Sapien device, and it was approved in uh, 2012, right before we started. 
Then we started using the Sapien XT, which was a second generation device. And since that time, just recently, approximately three or four weeks ago, the Sapien 3 device, which is their third generation, was just approved. After the FDA approved it, uh, Edwards invited a, approximately 10 centers from around the country that were not part of the original trial. And we were one of the only centers that were able to come initially, and we were the first center to do the new procedure with the Sapien 3 in the state of Alabama, and one of the very first ones to actually do it in the southeast. We actually also, they developed a new smaller size at that time, and we did one the first day with the smaller size, and we were the second place outside of the trial in the entire country to use the 20 millimeter device. We've also started using a second device, which is the um, core valve device, which is made th um, from Medtronic. So the two currently available devices on the market, UAB offers both to any patient. Regarding complications with TAVA, I think there's been an evolution in complications. So early on with the large sheets and large delivery system, vascular complication was always an issue. Uh, if you look at the first TAVA uh, publication, stroke was an issue. Uh, and then the, there was a third issue of periprosthetic leak. So those, those are the three major issues with TAVA. And over time, with a the, with the combination of device changes and proficiency by operators, those have come down. Uh, for my program, if our numbers have always stayed below the national average. Our stroke risk rate is about 2.5, 2.6%, which is lower than the national average of about 5 or 4 to 5%. Our vascular complication rate is about 5 to 6%, which is below the national average of about 10%. Uh, our debt rate is about 1 to 2%, which is really low. And our, and our rate of permanent pacemaker is about 1 to 2%, which is lower than the 5 or 6% quoted in national registries. So we do have a, a lower complication rate compared to the national registry. Apart from that, I think that um, with the new generation of devices, we've gone from, you know, large ball, uh, uh, our devices to smaller sheets. That's helped in induction of complications. Uh, we have a, a, uh, a policy of getting patients moving around quickly. That's helped re reduce that uh, hospitalization uh, that stay, uh, they're, they're, there's early mobilization, uh, they're seen by the surgeon and the cardiologist till they're discharged. We have nurse practitioners that see this patient on a daily basis. So we have a great team, uh, team support for these patients. They get physical therapy. Uh, thirdly, we have a special thing here at UAB where every patient that undergoes TAVA undergoes some sort of psychological evaluation uh, to look for dementia, you know, any kind of psychiatric problem that could impair their mobility or post-procedure care. And that's been helpful. And we've been able to you know, kind of give family support they need to take care of these patients and they go back home. So overall, we've had a great uh, pre and post procedural care for our patients here. UAB has always been a big referral center, uh, especially in, the, in, the, in terms of cardiovascular surgery. And it's still, it's still a big referral center. Uh, we cover this entire state. We cover parts of Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, uh, even parts of Tennessee. So we have a large referral uh, pattern. And, 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 you know, we, we, we've kept up with that. Uh, we've had great outcomes, so that's encouraged uh, physicians to refer their patients to us. When we're almost at 300 cases in three years, I think we're probably one of the largest sites out of the uh, partner study sites that has such a volume. Um, if you combine all the Stava centers in the state, uh, the entire, their entire numbers dwarf ours uh, by a mile. So I think we have a great referral pattern. Uh, we have great outcomes. And the referring docs have been very happy uh, sending their patients. So, you know, our volume is great. We're happy with it. I think the referring docs, and, and they know this, they know that when they come to UAB, they get the best care for their patient. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, you know, uh, it's not, you know, some people go to hospitals and it depends on what door you walk in, you get what care you get. So if you walk through a surgical door, you get surgery. If you go, walk through an interventional door, you get interventional, some spectinous thing. I think if you come to a, a through UAB, you come to a valve clinic, you're going to get the best. Uh, you're going to get a, a combined approach. You're going to get a hard team approach. You're going to get a complete evaluation. Um, and uh, the patient is going to get the best care at in clinic and during the hospital stay. And that's important uh, because, uh, you know, it's all about outcomes. Uh, they, they can be assured that they're going to, the patients are going to get the best outcomes out there in the country. Uh, we're going to do our very best to, do, to make sure that the patients are done safely. And they're going to get a feedback from us on how their patients are doing. Um, 
and you know the easiest way to to get across to us is just to call you know, the UAV operator or call the mist line and ask for the valve clinic. We do have we have a valve line. They can call the valve line um, and, and speak to our valve coordinators uh, at any time of the day. Usually, if they cannot get them uh, after hours, there's always someone on call that can take the call. So uh, I think that we have access. Uh, patients have access to us. The, the referring docs have access to us, uh, and, and we, we're going to give them the best care. So in terms of next generation and where we will be in the future, there are multiple different generation devices that are being approved now. We just recently got approval to use what's called valve and valve, where you put the prosthesis not only in the native valve, but in a prosthetic valve that's already been in place, one that has failed. There's also going to be movement into other um, valves, not just the aortic valve, but into the mitral position as well. And so multiple devices are being trialed all over the world right now, and we plan to be involved in all the um, future devices um, here at UAB, hopefully in some of the trials, but at least in the market once they're on the um, open market to be used. Uh, in 10 years, it's, it's really debatable, and some people um, think that there'll be over 50% roughly of all valves that are placed uh, will be done through a transcatheter procedure instead of done in an open surgical suite now. I think it will be used on a wider scale. I think that if you look, patients all want to have something more mentally invasive. No one wants to come in and, and have open heart surgery if they can have an equivalent procedure done in another way. They all want a smaller incision, want less pain, and this offers that. We've just got to see the long-term durability to make sure that it is as um, accurate as the open surgical procedure. And I think going forward, we have smaller delivery systems. We have smaller devices. We'll be used with more people, including the moderate risk patients. In the most recent trial, when they looked at the moderate risk patients, which are patients that have an estimated mortality of 4 to 6 percent, the mortality was about 1.5 percent for that group, which is at least as equivalent to open surgery. So once we get a better idea of exactly the long-term data, then I think it will rapidly grow, and you'll see many, many more patients using this procedure in the future. In the next 10 years, uh, I think uh, it's only going to get better. I think right now we've gone from treating high-risk inoperable patients, uh, we're kind of approaching the what we call the moderate risk patient population. Uh, I think you know we see patients coming and demanding TAVA. Uh, I think the only question out that's remaining with TAVA is durability. Uh, this de device has been around for about 10 years or so. We've been actively putting people for about the last five five years. The, the, the national the trial that brought TAVA to the U.S. was just about five years old. And at five years, the valve has been durable. And I think that, you know, if you have five more years of data, if it's durable at 10 years, then it's going to be, so I'll call it, default approach for a lot of patients with aortic stenosis with no other major medical problems. So I see us doing this in younger patients, healthier patients. The other thing is that there's a lot of um, interest in the mitral space where people are thinking of doing a transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Uh, some, of that, some of those valves are in, in trials right now. We hope to be part of those trials. Uh, we hope to be a big trial center and, 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 and get into uh, uh, larger uh, trials. And I think the mitral space is going to play a major role uh, as, we, as we go forward with our transcatheter heart valves.